In light of the current situation our country's in, Colin Kaepernick's name has been recirculating in the news cycle. I'm Sierra Goodwill here with Evan Lazar and Taylor Kyles with Roger Goodell's recent statement admitting wrongdoing on behalf of the league for banning pro peaceful protests on the football field. Things have been brought up about, okay, if they lift that ban of kneeling during the national anthem, will NFL teams now take a chance on Colin Kaepernick? And one team in particular, the New England Patriots, could potentially be a team that should consider bringing in Kaepernick for a workout. Yeah, you know, I think the Roger Goodell's statement, I, I had to pick my jaw off the floor when he said that, right? Because I was like, after all of this with Kaepernick and with the kneeling, with the president and all this stuff, now you're going to say all these years later that it's okay? I, I, I was shocked. I couldn't believe he walked that back. And as soon as he said that, the first thing that I tweeted out right afterwards and thought to myself was, well, this is, this is a mea culpa for Kaepernick. You know, this is you know, a clean slate for him. He should have a clean slate here. And he should not only be brought in for workouts, but he should be on on a roster in the NFL by the end of the, the summer, really, I would say. And, and I think the biggest thing standing in his way is not actually talent or the kneeling or anything like that anymore. But now that you're three years removed from football, it's kind of difficult to find out what exactly is he at 32 years old, three years removed from the game. What can he bring to the table anymore? Does he still have the arm strength? Does he still have the mobility? Does he still have the, a, little, a little bit semblance of accuracy, although he's never really the most accurate passer? He was always a guy that could at least put the ball where he wanted more times than not. And that's going to be the question is with these workouts, with these tryouts, whatever it ends up being, is he anywhere close to the guy that he was in 2016? And can he get back to that game shape and that speed that he used to play with? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things he could bring immediately is leadership. You know, Chip Kelly and Belichick are very close. And Chip Kelly, when asked back when he and Ka Kaepernick were both on the 49ers, he was asked, well, how was Colin in the locker room? Was he a distraction? He said, absolutely not. Colin Kaepernick was as great in the locker room as you could expect. He's clearly a vocal leader. He's someone who leads by example as well. So I think immediately, especially when you consider a veteran quarterback who you don't fully know what he's going to be doing in live action, you know, he has to have some type of X factor. And I think, you know, we spoke about how important it is to have have those locker room leaders like Slater and the McCordys and people who aren't just great on the field, but also they give you that added benefit of giving you some social perspective as well when you kind of need to go down that well of, you know, getting another perspective. So I think that could be a fantastic potential addition. And also I know the QB school, it's a great YouTube channel, broke down Kaepernick's workout where he pointed out that his footwork isn't great right now. And obviously, you know, he would be a backup. So it's not like it's the worst thing in the world. So he could throw off timing a little bit. Like you said, Evan, he always, hasn't always been the most accurate guy. But when you consider if he can still give you some of the mobility that he gave you, he's still a big play threat. I'm sure he's still got the arm strength. You know, everyone loves to talk about the falling off the cliff with the arm strength thing. John Elway can still rip it. It's not so much that getting older, your arm just dies. It's more about, like, can you be accurate? Can you hold up sustained hits and things like that? So I don't think it would really be uh, much of a question of his playing and everything like that. I think, especially when we have seen the history – of the Patriots bringing in a lightning rod for controversy. They brought in Tebow and they had him for a long enough time. And Belichick was made it very clear. He's like, I'm not going to keep doing this every day. He will not make it an issue. So I think if there is a team that was, is best suited for Colin Kaepernick in terms of being able to handle the media storm that's going to ensue, whether you like it or not. And just, you know, someone who gives you a great locker room presence, I can't think of really many more better fits than the Patriots. And I do think there's two sides to the Patriots being a potentially good fit for Colin Kaepernick. And like you said, Taylor, they're, they handle big personalities. They tried it out with Antonio Brown, didn't go too well, but you mentioned Tebow. But then there's the other side of the question marks surrounding the quarterback position and how Jared Stidham's still super unproven. So Kaepernick might not be a distraction in terms of the social justice issues, but there's no doubt that he will be uh, calling a lot of attention from the media. People will probably eventually have call on him to start if Stidham has a bad game. And are the Patriots worried about that getting in their QB1, Jarrett Stidham's head? Will that affect the team uh, in that negative way instead of Kaepernick's social justice issues way ways? Is that too much of a distraction? There were some rumors coming out of Gillette around the draft, around free agency, that they were behind you or who we're drafting or whatever the case may be and I do think that there would be a little bit of an element there with Kaepernick but I think the biggest thing with Kaepernick 
is it going back to last year when he had that workout, that last second schedule change that he had on the day of the workout where it was supposed to be in one location with NFL teams. It ended up being moved to the next day in a different location. He lost about half the teams that were supposed to go to that workout as a result of that, of that move. You know, when the Patriots were one of them. So he was supposed to have over a dozen teams at that workout. It ended up only being eight in the Patriots because of scheduling conflicts couldn't get their scouts into that workout the way that they wanted to. So, if I was Kaepernick and I was serious about coming back, then you really need to showcase your skills to all 32 teams if possible. And you can't pull any of that last second stuff. And I'm not saying that it's his fault that he's not on a team because it's certainly not, but at least give yourself as much of a fair chance as you can from your perspective to get on a squad. Because when you start pulling with the NFL and you start moving things and, and bailing on things and stuff like that, it never looks good. It's a, it's an interview. It's a professional interview and that's never going to look good. And the, the final point I wanted to make though, is that if you look at what Baltimore is doing with Greg Roman and, and Lamar Jackson, it's exactly what the Niners were doing with Colin Kaepernick in the early part of the decade. The pistol, the, the empty stuff that they're running, getting the quarterback's legs involved, that was all – started when we set out in Lamar Jackson in Baltimore last year was all started in the 2012 season with Colin Kaepernick in San Francisco. So we've seen an offense succeed back then. We've seen an offense succeed last year that runs the same way that Kaepernick is able to run a scheme and run a system. And we've seen it work at the NFL level at an extremely high level. So there's definitely a semblance of a system of a way of, of a skill set for Colin Kaepernick to be able to play again in the NFL. But again, just don't shoot yourself in the foot by saying, you know, we're going to work out this day and then moving the workout that that type of stuff is not going to fly with the NFL teams. So just do the best that you can to get everybody in the building. And I think that Kaepernick will show that with that offense kind of around him with that system sort of made around him that he can succeed at this level still. Yeah. When it comes to Sidham's confidence, I think if Colin Kaepernick were to be brought in, like you say, the system has been in place, like we've seen the blueprint, but that would also mean a huge overhaul for the Patriots offense. Yeah. Now we've seen them go to a more run heavy approach with Brissett, but I think it's, people have kind of forgotten exactly what that game plan was. Like, yes, there were designed QB runs, but it wasn't a lot. I went back and actually watched uh, Jacoby Brissett's carries from that game. I think he only had three or four. I think Edelman may have had one or two as well. So he, you've seen them incorporate different types of things to fit quarterbacks. But at the same time, I think it would be pretty outrageous if Jared Sidham does struggle for people to expect Kaepernick to be the starter when, like you said, Evan, earlier, he's been out of the league for years. You don't know where the mobility is exactly. He can show you on the practice field, but it's still – you have to replicate that on the field with all these athletes and all these young guys and everything, especially considering how much faster the NFL has gotten in the brief time that he's been gone. So I'm not so sure that it would be a valid claim for people to – I'm sure they will because we know how fans tend to work when young quarterbacks struggle. But um, I'm not sure it would really do much to shake Stidham's confidence considering, you know, Cap's been out for so long, and Brian Hoyer has more recent experience in the NFL starting, or just at least in terms of playing time. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see the Patriots bring in Colin Kaepernick for at least a workout. And for all the rest of our NFL and Patriots coverage, find it on our website at clnsmedia.com and on our YouTube channel at Patriots Press Pass.